The world is currently gripped in a pandemic. COVID-19 is tearing through our society and the NHS could struggle to cope with the number of people needing its services. The UK government has called for British manufacturers to start producing parts for ventilators so that hospitals have the right equipment for the wave of coronavirus patients they are facing. Can manufacturers step up to the challenge? Although the effects of COVID-19 are fairly mild for most people, unfortunately for a small number the effects can be brutal or even deadly. In the worst case, the coronavirus causes such difficulty with breathing that those suffering may need assistance from a ventilator just to stay alive. With the transmission of COVID-19 being so high, the NHS doesn't have enough equipment to handle this crisis. On the 15th of March 2020, the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, announced his intentions to ask UK manufacturers to start producing parts for ventilators. We've been talking to a whole host of uh, companies about it and the Prime Minister's hosting a conference call today with them to, to say very clearly to the nation's manufacturers, uh, ventilators are the thing that we are going to need um, and frankly right across the world the, 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 the demand for them is incredibly high so it is not possible to produce too many so anybody who can should turn their production and their engineering minds over to the production of ventilators. Many manufacturers are keen to help where they can, but switching production to these parts that they've never built before comes with a unique set of challenges. In terms of how easy it is for a, a manufacturer to switch uh, production, I don't think we should take it for granted that that is easy at all. Uh, these are very uh, specialist uh, uh, products. Uh, and stopping production of another line uh, and shifting on to something entirely different is, is going to be a challenge. Um, and I don't think we should underestimate that. We have, you know, many manufacturers in the UK that have capable processes and, you know, sort of in aligning those processes in the national interest, um, it wouldn't take an awful lot to configure some of those adaptable processes to be able to um, support the national need and produce PPE and uh, ventilators at a critical time. Um, is what we do lack is cohesion in terms of how we pull that together so that we've got a supply chain that's married up and you've got alignment between those businesses. There are a few key elements such as flow sensors and filters and uh, mostly in the sensors really where there are relatively complicated individual parts. Those are presently the biggest bottleneck. Uh, the other side of it is that there are some very particular uh, components for which everyone in his horse is, is trying to source globally now. Since the government's call for new companies to help manufacture new ventilators, a number of big name engineering companies have featured in the UK press. The Ventilator Challenge UK Consortium includes companies such as Airbus, Ford, Rolls Royce, and Siemens and are reported to have received orders for more than 10,000 ventilators, MRHA approval pending. Production is due to begin next week, but with big names having taken the headlines, are the UK government missing a trick by not including the expertise of smaller, perhaps more agile engineering companies? If we're looking at what type of manufacturers could potentially switch, I think we need to move away from the, from the bigger manufacturers. I think this is something that uh, is more traditionally in the field of, of an SME um, that has worked perhaps in uh, the medical medical tech uh, space. I think that would be probably a starter for where I would start to look for, for where these manufacturers would be. Well, I think it's the agile SMEs, these companies with, say, less than 100 uh, employees that can move very quickly. I think the major challenge we've got is that uh, it's accessing government and the NHS. They're, I understand it, they're very big bureaucracies, and so they, uh, they struggle to deal with small companies. And you can imagine there's lots of companies trying to help, and they don't know what to do and how to access. So the NHS must be bombarded with requests. The concern and wonder is, are there a lot of SMEs who can do this? Why are not we not being involved? Why are we not able to do it? And it's looking for the big names. And the big names are good, don't get me wrong, but there are a lot of small names that are just as capable and because we're able to move fast. So if you've, if you've ever worked at a large company or anything like that, 
procurement cycle at a large company could take a few months. Um, in a small company, you you know, put the car together, we'll order it now. Um, it's as simple as that. Engineers, anaesthetists and surgeons from the University of Oxford and King's College London are building and testing prototypes that can be manufactured using techniques and tools available in well-equipped universities and SME workshops. The design aims to exploit off-the-shelf components and equipment in a bid to achieve regulatory approval of an open source design. And once this has been achieved, the approach could unlock potential for a whole new kind of distributed manufacturing effort. But before SMEs can begin production of ventilators on any scale, there are a number of obstacles that will need to be addressed. I think fundamentally the government need to select a few key players, a few key SMEs. They then need to make them hubs and then those hubs go out, purchase whatever's required. But you need to find those experts. So it's, it seems a bit crazy that they haven't gone to a ventilator company. Why have they gone to two vacuum cleaner companies? And why did they first state that they were going to go to JCB? JCB don't really know a lot about ventilators. Uh, and med tech companies seem to have been ignored. The biggest obstacle that has come here is the timing. And if the government had basically come out and said, if you have a product, develop it, we will buy it, if it meets the spec. If there was that sort of certainty, then I think we, we would be two weeks ahead of where we are right now. Because there were statements from, from the government. So, for instance, the, the health secretary saying, we will buy from anywhere and from whomever makes. But that's not, that's not a purchase order. That's just a political statement. One of the key challenges is going to be access to funding. Um, so we would need intervention from governments in providing some of the upfront development costs, but not limited to the company that's developing the product that takes account of the costs through the supply chain. Some of those will be one-off costs. Some of those, you know, will be an ongoing cost. If there is an opportunity for some of these costs to be to be covered by by the government, I think there would be a huge degree of appetite for a number of SMEs to step forward. Whatever the other uh, challenges, for example, the, the standards required, the clinical standards required, I certainly think that if we got the uh, financial problems out of the way, there would be a lot more people ready to take on this work. With a large number of SMEs across the UK wanting to help during the current crisis, be it through an agile nature of their manufacturing techniques or helping through a community-led approach, the big question remains. Will the UK be able to make the most of our SMEs' eagerness and expertise? Only time will tell.